you just struck the largest soft drinks deal in history, the, uh, the takeover of Dr. Pepper Snapple. We've seen in the last couple of days very, very volatile markets, a lot of funky trading. Does this give you any sort of pause for concern about the timing of this deal? Is it, does it, are you still comfortable with it? No, it, it, our impression or the impression that we have from investors is that they're, they're taking very much a long-term view of this. So yeah, they're distracted a little bit in the background by what's going on on their screens, but really this is a long-term play and doesn't have any immediate impact on us. Now I want you to explain the, I suppose, the mechanics here because you're putting together hot drinks, cold drinks, you guys already have a huge coffee business, but this looks like a really long play on sugary drinks, which I think it's fair to say is kind of against one of the prevailing trends in the industry towards health and wellness. Where, where does the growth come from here? Yeah, it, it's really, it's a play on building a distribution platform. And to be able to get to every point of consumption in the United States, you need a very sophisticated distribution system. To do that, you need a blend of scale and growth. And the beverages of like carbonated soft drinks are very profitable and of scale, but they're not generating a lot of growth. So the key is to take advantage of the ability to build an infrastructure around those businesses to layer in faster growing segments. Ready to drink coffee is probably one you know, great example of that because that's one of the fastest growing segments right now. And is this, you weren't able to build this distribution network sort of as a standalone. This is effectively you've bought through Dr. Pepper, you've bought that network. Yeah, I think people underestimate how challenging it is to get distribution in small outlets. So what we're talking about here is not just grocery stores and mass, we're talking about convenience stores, gas stations, point of consumption that's distributed all over. Very challenging to get there, but that's where brands like, you know, some of these new coffee brands in ready to drink format are actually built there. And does this put you into a sort of much more direct competition with the likes of uh, Coke or the likes of Pepsi? You obviously have this distribution agreement with Starbucks. It's, you know, it's a 200 to 300 billion dollar category. So I don't look at that as direct competition with anybody in particular. I look at it as a lot of white space and for us to come in and carve out a piece of that. Uh, so that's really what this play is more than anything else. And what about internationally? Because JAB, um, the, the sort of powerhouse investor who are really behind a lot of these deals, they have a huge international business. They have Dow Egberts, uh, which is, I think, one of the biggest coffee, coffee businesses in the world. Are you guys going to take this company overseas? Dr. Pepper, obviously, I think 10% of their growth is international at the moment. So it looks like room to grow there. Yeah, th this is two American companies who are heavily focused on North America. So what we're doing is taking both of them together and creating a scale company of $11 billion primarily in North America. So no immediate focus to go outside of this market. There's a tremendous amount of upside in North America where we have the scale and the expertise. So this is a really interesting question for a deal nut like me. You, um, who've been the CEO of a very, very big, very successful private company, obviously in doing this deal, you now have a small public shareholder base that you're gonna have to answer to. What are some of the benefits, other than obviously having a new currency in the public markets, what are the benefits of going public again? Yeah, I mean, look, I've been a public company CEO and a private company CEO, and they have their pros and cons. Having a public company currency, as you describe, is a nice um, element when we think about M&A in the future to be able to create uh, some creative transactions that allow potential partners to participate in the upside. That's, that's the primarily the reason why we do this. And can we expect to see um, this, this now combined company use some of that public market currency to go out and do more M&A? Yeah, I think what I find interesting in the beverage industry is M&A is a bit different. You don't have to make a full out acquisition uh, of, the, uh, of a brand. You can enter into a partnership with a low commitment on both sides up front and then see how it develops and eventually turn it into a bigger relationship. And the example I would use that Dr. Pepper Snapple did was with Buy, which was an allied brand that they distributed and eventually they acquired the whole brand. So I don't think we have to go out and do any big transactions. In fact, this is a very big transaction and we're gonna be busy putting these two businesses together first.